Entry 1. March 19th. I find myself in a somewhat unconventional position, and while I'm uncertain about the legality of documenting this, the situation is too remarkable to ignore. I'm currently on site at what I'll dub Central Lab 47B, no connection to the assumed reference. It took a lifetime of dedication, and surprisingly, I only discovered the existence of this place three months ago. The extensive preparation over the past five years should have hinted at such a facility, but the realization only dawned recently. Despite my doubts and questions about the worthiness of my sacrifices, being here feels like a surreal accomplishment. Fifty years of anticipation wouldn't have adequately prepared me for the nature of my contributions. Interestingly, my team appears to be capable. Morrison, our esteemed lab director, boasts three decades of involvement in projects of this nature. Remarkably, he manages to run operations using outdated technology, and I refrain from questioning his methods. Beyond his professional competence, Morrison is an amiable colleague, making the working environment more enjoyable. The lab itself is surprisingly pleasant, fostering an atmosphere where people share jokes, discuss their families, and make references to prohibited external servers. It's a unique blend of professionalism and camaraderie. I am eager to witness the unfolding events in this place, and am confident that our collective efforts will lead to significant achievements. Entry to July 4th, Happy 4th. To whom? Who cares? It's an unspoken truth in our line of work that federal holidays hold as much significance as Jack and Shittake. The project takes precedence over any semblance of holidays, time off, or concerns for workers' rights. Attempting to take legal action against the federal government for insufficient lunch break minutes on a top secret project is a futile endeavor. Ah. Coincidentally, Morrison, our dedicated director, is a fervent 4th of July enthusiast. He assured us that the relentless pressure over the past three months was geared towards granting us this one day off for an authentic American barbecue. How considerate. Personally, I would argue that sleep deprivation is hardly worth enduring for under-seasoned burgers and overcooked ribs, but that's just my perspective. Regardless, the festivities provided an opportunity to reconnect with my journal and acquaint myself with colleagues while attempting to unravel the enigma of our work. Despite holding a top-secret clearance, I remain in the dark about the intricacies behind the scenes. Operational and research needs are within my purview, but the broader context eludes me. Enter the realm of rumors. During this time, I developed a close friendship with managing senior engineer Abed Abadi, who, being involved in the research, became a valuable source of information. After a few beers and a hearty discussion about his yearning for his wife, I posed the question, what exactly are we doing here? To my surprise, Abed wasn't entirely certain either. From my understanding, his team oversees cell cultivation engineering needs, but the unique nature of the cell groups they are studying sets them apart from any previously cataloged genome, even within federal databases. The primary objective seems to be sustaining these cells' vitality with an additional focus on comprehending how various stimuli can adversely affect them and how they respond. The question remains, what precisely are we dealing with here? Entry 3, October 24th. A somber turn of events unfolded today. My manager has passed away. Oddly enough, it seemed the higher-ups had no intention of informing us. Morrison attempted to spin a tale about her leaving the facility due to a personal matter but it reeked of deception from the start. The truth slipped out during one of my late night shifts when some executives casually mentioned her death. It appears that even classified information can succumb to human error. My colleague Mia has formulated two theories on this matter. Either the secrecy is to maintain our productivity by preventing us from being distracted by the news of her death, or it's because mortality isn't an unusual occurrence in this environment. I'm leaning towards the former, raising a metaphorical glass of whiskey to that assumption. Nevertheless, it feels ethically wrong to carry on with our work as if nothing significant happened. Regardless of our past interactions, 
Wendy's death deserves acknowledgement. Every person deserves a moment of silence. This situation...